It's from the Cold War. Um, T-54 was the tank this is copied from that was a Soviet tank, but this was actually a tank made by the Chinese. In the 1950s, uh, the Russians gave T-54s to China. Don't forget, this is the era where China and Russia were great pals, and the Chinese copied it. And when it's a Chinese copy, it's called a Type 59. So it's a T-tank in Russian service, and a Type tank when it's in Chinese service. And this particular Type 59 is going to set you more complex because it's got a British gun on it. It was actually bought by Royal Ordnance, and they put the L7 105mm gun we've seen earlier, we'll see again, uh, driving around the museum, um, in case countries that have bought the Type 59 would like to upgrade um, to the classic L7 gun. So it's one of these ones that was taken to trade fairs, touted around as if to say, would you like to come and uh, have your type tanks upgraded to this standard. Um, I don't think it's sold particularly well, so uh, after a certain amount of time, Royal Ordnance kindly gave the vehicle to the tank museum. One thing you'll notice that's typical of the Chinese vehicles, they seem to be a lot better made than their Russian equivalents. If you park that next to a T-54, although they look very similar, the finish on the Chinese tank is usually a heck of a lot better. Powered by a V-12 engine, V-12 diesel in the back, and it's crosswise mounted in the back. Exactly the same really, except it's the license built version as the T-54's original engine. But the only trouble with them was that the rounded type of turret, which as David said has always been likened to an inverted frying pan, gives you very limited ammunition stage. You have a driver in the front, a three-man crew in the turret, and it has torsion, crispy type suspension, plays a torsion bar on the But uh, this is a Type 59, and as they say, copied from the T-54. So it looks very similar, but you can tell when you get up close that you're looking at a well-made Chinese vehicle, not a rough-made Soviet one. One issue we're always quite keen to try and make clear here at the Tank Museum, a lot of the, uh, the stories of tanks are um, sometimes myths, sometimes they're national myths, sometimes they're done for very good propaganda reasons and uh, one of the stories we're always told is western tanks were always so much better than the eastern bloc tanks certainly through the cold war and on the whole that's probably true to say tank for tank but uh, the whole point about if you're playing top trumps you certainly would like a western tank one of the nato tanks compared to one of these but don't forget it was how the tanks were going to be used and uh, the Soviet and probably the Chinese philosophy, philosophy behind the tank, sorry, um, is very much in words of, of, of numbers. Get the numbers of tanks out there. And they're designed very much to support the type of warfare and how they wanted to fight wars rather than how we think they were going to be fought. And uh, don't forget, when the Russians were going to advance, they would have huge numbers of tanks and their attitude to the tanks was perhaps more our attitude to a hand grenade. If you need five hand grenades to clear a building, here's five hand grenades. If you need five T-54 tanks to get from A to B, here's five tanks. And there'll be another five ready to go from B to C. So it was sheer numbers um, designed to fight the NATO forces. And when we in the West, we looked at certain tank battles in the Middle East, we thought that those Russian-designed tanks didn't fight particularly well. The Russians weren't worried about that because they knew that was not how they intended to use those tanks if they had been used in anger properly in the Cold War in the way they wanted to use them. And as an example of this, we're now bringing on another Russian tank, a relatively new addition to the collection here, uh, recently swapped with the Polish um, government, we've swapped a chieftain tank for this T-72, 
And this is a wonderful example of that Russian philosophy. Make a simple, well-built, reliable tank. And this one coming on now is the T-72. There's a T-72. One of the problems with it was that in an effort to lower the profile, they did away with the loader, largely because the loader has to stand up and detain it. By doing away with him, you could lower the profile of the tank completely, but it meant that you had all the ammunition arranged in a rotary device like a carousel in the base of the turret. And this made the tank very vulnerable. The um, allies who encountered them in the Gulf said they blew up like a firework when they were hit and the turrets usually blew off. The um, Russians actually at one point tried to make a more advanced, technologically advanced tank anyway, which is their T-64. No T-64 was allowed out of Russia yet. The tank originally, the T-64 at least, had a horizontally opposed T-64. T-72 has been made in many different variants, um, probably about 25,000 actually uh, been used all around the world at the moment, so it's, it's a very numerously produced tank. Uh, very effective, very low profile, you look at that low profile, so again, a hard target to see and hit. And um, as with uh, much of Soviet equipment, they did different variations depending on what country they were giving it to, or if they were being built in different countries. So the ones that the Soviet army were using actually had a higher standard of armour protection uh, than some of those that were being built elsewhere. And one of the issues that, uh, again, we follow the tank is here, we've actually found one of these tanks in Cuba with a lot of guns for sale for as low as 30,000 euros. And uh, in terms of military terms, 30,000 euros for a tank is absolute peanuts. And the real worry now, of course, is those tanks, no one really knows where they all ended up. So it's one of those tanks, not only were we, uh, could we expect to meet, we will meet, or British forces will meet again in the future, because uh, they're out there, they're in their large numbers, readily available, relatively cheap, uh, and very, very reliable. They keep working with very little maintenance, which means if they sat in a scrapyard in Eastern Europe for a decade, doesn't take too much to get them going again.